What's going on everybody? It's Ryan here and today we are going to talk about subtraction. We're going to talk about elimination and cutting things out of your life. Actually making this video for the public speaking channel. I've been a little gun shy with trying to make content and it's been really hard when um, when I'm just not in the mood, right? I think that there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of apprehension, there's a lot of, um, I don't know what you would call it. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to make a video every single day. I'm going to publish it on the public speaking practice channel and just talk about stuff. You know, I need to get in the habit of just making this sort of a regular thing. And part of the reason why is maybe I should publish it on the regular channel. I, I don't know. But the point is I'm going to make a video every day and we'll talk about it. And the topic I'm talking about is subtraction. Um, I have a lot of things in my life, uh, uh, business and creative. And what I find is I add more things as I kind of dabble in more things the less concentrated my abilities become, the less time I have. I'm not able to put the quality time necessary to really um, compound the, my abilities. Uh, and I think that, uh, I don't know if you can relate with this, but then if you find yourself kind of getting bored of what you're doing, you kind of want to do something else, right? Just because you're bored. But the, the simple truth about it is, it, and I know this for sure, is that when you obsessively focus on one thing, or very few things concentrated, the better your efforts become, the better your results become, the larger your results become, by and large, by such a significant uh, portion. So one of the things that I got good at in, in my area of business is email. And because I got so good at it, it's, it's really changed my life financially. It's, it's made me recognize within my uh, group of peers uh, in my industry and has kind of created this sort of um, halo effect that made me makes me very skilled. And, um, and the thing is, now that I have success in this one area, I want to start dabbling in other parts. You know, I bought a business. We bought a business. We, I want to do a YouTube channel. I'm trying to build this studio out, trying to, to make something. And, it's, and, you know, I've been, like, goofing off. Like, I, I can do this little switcher here, and I can change my, uh, my angle here. So, like, I'm spending all this money on audio and video equipment and just um, really not producing anything. So I got to get something out there. So I think that's, this is a, a very good topic because one of the things that kind of come in my mind or one of the stories that I've heard actually one of the first thing that comes to mind is this gentleman by the name Brian Tracy he's a very popular kind of self-development guru guy and uh, he was back a while ago and one of the things that he talked about on a, on an interview uh, was entrepreneur on fire he talked about how he uh, invested in real estate and he lost a lot of money and one of the things that kind of sort of shocked me about it was it was even more painful than it really was. I think he lost like a million dollars, but it was really more like two million dollars because he lost, he paid taxes on that money, right? So it's actually probably way more than that. One million dollars is actually really, you know, two million dollars. And because of that, I think about like, and the reason why he was, what he, what he kind of was being humble about and realizing is that he was doing something that he wasn't in his circle of competence, something he didn't understand well. Um, because he got you know so much success in one area, he thinks he can easily like transition that into another area. It just seems like that you feel like, and to some degree, once you get some confidence, you feel like you're just so smart. This um, uh, confidence becomes starts to approach arrogance. I won't say I'm arrogant. Uh, actually, I am arrogant. I'll say that I am arrogant. But one of the things that I, I try to manage that arrogance because the thing that gets us in a lot of trouble or gets me in a lot of trouble is thinking that I can do something in an area that I have very little experience in. And and that's the thing where it really becomes important that you always uh, become a student. Um, and the being a student really is about just practicing, being always learning, always developing yourself. I think that's one of the hardest things when it comes to this is being able to, especially when you've already had a little bit of success, that you got to remember that you're always a beginner somewhere. And if you want to grow and if you want to improve as a person, improve as a business person, improve as a, yeah, and just improve as a person, you have to approach everything with sort of like a, a, a student's mindset. I think one of the books that I read that was that talked a lot about this was um, called uh, The Fighter's Mind. And he talks about this thing where you, you gotta teach someone that is plus, minus, and equals. And what that is is plus, you, you teach or work with someone who's like a mentor, someone that's above you. Then you have an equal, someone who's sort of like in your middle, right? Someone who's a peer. 
And then you have your minus, someone that is kind of below you, someone that's behind you, someone that you become a mentor to. And those are one of the things that kind of kind of stress in my mind. It's kind of one of the things why I want to get into consulting and kind of help build people's email uh, program and do other things to kind of help their business. But see, like, again, I'm, I'm finding myself getting spread thin because my mind wants to do a bunch of different things. And it's challenging because I know that the more time I spend focusing on the primary business that I have, the thing that I'm really good at, uh, it will probably reap me more results. And to be truthful, I've been probably, I do spend 60% of my time on that business. But the truth is I should be spending more like 80 to 90% of my time on that business. So I don't know what I paused there. I just had a brain fart. So I, I should be spending 80 to 90% of my time in that business. And the reason why I need to spend that much time in that business is because the more time I spend in it, the more money I'm going to make, the more opportunities I'm going to have, the better I'm going to get. I'm going to be able to build this brick house, this, this skyscraper. Whereas the YouTube is sort of a lot like um, a pile of dirt. I'm actually just trying to build a foundation, right? Actually, I have an okay foundation, but now I'm trying to like, build that first level and that second level, right? Because one of my goals is to have um, a million subscribers in four years. That's the goal I set for myself. But, you know, I'm going to take this year or two to sort of like really get good at this and figure this out, you know? And that's like, because it just this YouTube bitch is always going to be there. But I think long term, because to me, this is something I'm always going to want to do. I'm going to always want to talk in front of the camera. I'm going to always want to, and maybe not even talk in front of the camera, I'm going to always want to express myself. You know, because it's really what this is about creative expression, because I have these thoughts and I want to be able to build something that I can um, that I can share. I know I feel like I have something value to share, but the problem is, you know, being able to kind of package that, get really good at presenting myself, getting really good at just talking in front of the camera. It's, it's a tough thing because, you know, you forget, I forget that to get good at anything, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of consistency. And even if after a time of consistency, if you stop doing it, you're going to lose your edge. And people who are at the top of their game, like Mr. Beast, for example, it's really hard to see like how much untold time he spends making a video, how much time he spends working on an idea to for a video. So when I when I think about that, I just, you know, I'm trying to spend just a few minutes here, a few minutes there. So what I'm trying to do is just really spend 10 minutes a day or making a 10 minute video, putting on the public speaking channel. And maybe if I'm lucky, I will find a way to sort of make a video that's good enough that makes it on the primary channel. Anyway, that's sort of my thinking about it. I'm not sure if that's uh, the good way of doing it. Oh, another thing too that I did too is I'm gonna start doing um, videos in the car. So when I drive to the gym, I'll just talk in front of the camera. And a lot of that is just, part of this is just getting practice, like getting those reps and getting those sets. You know, like learning how to look at the camera again, getting back in that groove. Because there's always this, this weird thing that happens before you before I click record. It's this sort of apprehension and this kind of tightness. And what I need to do is I need to sort of like relax. I need to find a way to relax in front of the camera. I need to find a way to sort of develop this skill of presenting myself. And, and then, of course, more importantly, not just presenting myself, but now getting the ideas, putting them together, and then presenting them to you something of value so that's part of a lot of what I'm, I'm trying to do in my head it is a, it's a very hard thing and as I think about this more you know the more I think of trying to be successful in three or six months the more I become very I guess a little anxious right so that's kind of why it's important to have patience you know, if you think about a lot of where anxiety comes from, it comes from not having patience. It comes from, I guess, wanting something too soon. I think the impatience is powerful because it kind of drives you and motivates you. But, you know, me being older, me having myself established a little bit more and having a little bit of wins under my belt, now it's really a matter of like just taking the time to remember that I am a student, right? And, then, and maybe that's one way you can look at it too. If you're trying to build a channel or build some sort of content creation is to get to, to really becoming a student again um, and just kind of looking at that lens because if you look through that lens the pressure doesn't feel so bad like if you're just learning if you're making videos about you learning about what you're discovering it doesn't become this feeling of necessarily having to be this kind of expert or this 
really smart person because sometimes that's where I come from. Like I want to like impress, I want to impress people, right? I want to show like, oh, look, look, look what I'm, look what I'm teaching. Look how much I know and look how much I'm sharing with you, right? And I, I can probably come from more of a humble place, right? It's a mixture of those things. Like it's a push and pull, but that sort of ends my ten minutes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have a question or comment or you want me to talk about a particular topic, this is probably a good place to go because I am, you know, this is not really meant to be evergreen. It's really just meant to be a practice channel video. But if you enjoyed this video, click like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And I'll see you all on the next video. See you guys.